The United States has a long history of turning women's bodies into symbols. What says freedom and possibility more than the Statue of Liberty? My research begins in the early 1800s when the Industrial Revolution brought loads of new textile factories to New England, and they needed employees, fast. Factory owners identified and recruited a brand new wage labor force, farmer's daughters. These young women, known as mill girls, flooded into towns like Lowell and Lawrence, Massachusetts, and from about 1810 on, their bodies were mythologized in 19th century media. I wanted to understand why and how these women were transformed, like the Statue of Liberty, into symbols for the social, economic, and moral health of the rapidly industrializing nation. In my investigation and close reading of archival materials, I've identified two competing uses for the bodies of mill girls in the fiction, letters, essays, and illustrations produced by people who never worked a day in the factories. Those who supported the money being made using women's cheaper labor wrote mill girl characters who were refined into middle class ladies. Tomboys, fresh off the farm, would leave the factories with newly slender waists, neatly combed hair, and a rich husband, transformed in mind and social class as much as in body. On the flip side, those who were concerned about newly financially independent, upwardly mobile, and socially liberated single ladies wrote characters who faced body-destroying threats like illness, injury, and most disastrous premarital sex. Horrified readers watched mill girls lose limbs when they were sucked into looms, watched them waste away after being seduced and dumped at a Boston brothel, and shed a tear as they tragically died, a result of their dangerous work and even more dangerous social aspirations. The unrealistic promises and exaggerated threats of factory work were literally written on the bodies of these young women. Meanwhile, the mill girls themselves were busy working and writing, in stories they wrote for their magazine, The Lowell Offering, they're forced to navigate this debate about their own bodies. Sure, they wrote, our bodies might change, but that doesn't really mean anything. But of course, this debate wasn't really about them. Writers outside the mill had political agendas and social anxieties, and these women's bodies were just the vehicles they used to express them. Depictions of mill girls both reflected and created public opinion about their value, a history that extends long before the Statue of Liberty, praise for women's beauty and productivity, and fears about their autonomy continue to be represented in our popular media. My research helps us understand the consequences of turning women's bodies into tools, because if we can understand it, we can undo it, allowing women to define their own worth. Thank you.